Well, good morning. Welcome back. Uh, this morning uh, we are uh, out looking for bison. Uh, and as luck would have it, typical my luck, I'm walking out uh, the trail here to try to find where the bison are located at and I stumble across a few deer, but I don't have any of my long lenses out of my backpack or ready to go. So I did take a couple images, you know, using uh, my video camera here, uh, which if any of those turned out, I'll put them in right here. So what are we doing today? Well, we're here hoping to find some bison so we can test out that lens I told you in a previous video that I was gonna buy. You know, I have been able to find a 300 F4 uh, Pro, Olympus that is. All right, so we're gonna here this morning, see if we can find something to photograph with it. Of course, you have to have it out of the back of your bag to be able to capture an image of something you just happened to stumble across, you know, that's just kind of my luck. So we're gonna walk around here for a little bit, see if we can find, you know, hopefully some bison. And if we can't, then we'll try to find something else to shoot. But uh, stay tuned, thanks for coming along. All right, so let's uh, talk here for a minute since I seem to be striking out on my uh, hunt for bison this morning. I don't know, they must be hiding back in the woods or hiding in an area that I can't get to with the trails that are here. So I, you know, at this point, I haven't been able to really do much. So let's talk a little bit about this, at least for a moment. All right, so this is, all right, the 300 F4 Pro Series lens. It's got a programmable function button. It's, you know, you know got a built-in IS. You know, it has a built-in lens hood. You can see there, tripod collar actually has a built-in Arca Swiss set up in it. All right, so again, in micro four-thirds, this particular lens, 300 f4 is really a 600 f4. And you can see, here's the size of it. All right, what's it weigh? I don't know, I haven't put it on a scale, but I'm gonna say camera and lens combined, three pounds maybe. All right, fairly light. Now, I think if you had a battery grip it might balance a little better but it's not you know terrible this also does have the what's called the focus clutch you can go from auto to manual focus just by moving this clutch now that's a good thing to have but I can also tell you it's a pain in the neck because just sitting here trying to take an image of a bird I actually accidentally flipped it into our manual focus as opposed to autofocus, you know, that can get you if you're not paying attention. So something to look out for if you're looking at this lens. But the lens itself, pretty darn good. I mean, it, it just, you know, using it here, um, you know, a couple things, it acquires focus quick. You know, it, 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 at least through the camera, the images look pretty good. All right, now, I can tell you already, I've used this at home in my backyard, which apparently, based on what I'm seeing today, is a better place for wildlife <laughs> than even coming out here to a, a caged area or a penned in area where bison are near my home. You know, because I've gotten some really good images, you know, of some turkeys in my backyard, you know, as well, or excuse me, when I say turkeys, I mean wild turkeys, all right, along as, as well as a few deer, because we, we, at least here through the last couple months, we've been having a lot of wild turkeys and a lot of, of deer in our backyard late in the afternoon, early evening hours, you know, say around five o'clock, we seem to be able to you know, to have them come up fairly close to the house. So I've taken some images there. Now what I will do is, since I brought that up, I'll take a few of those images and I'll stick them in here so you can see it.
right now, I mean, again, focus speed on this seems to be, you know, just spot on fast. This thing screams. I mean, this is a, a great lens, a great setup. And again, you compare this against, you know, a, a Nikon or a, a, a Canon setup, and you're looking at, this is brand new, it's three grand. I bought it for two. All right, I paid $2,000 for it. All right, from a used uh, individual, I bought it, you know, bought it off the market. You know, and, and you know, you're looking at competing against lenses that are $13,000, $14,000. I think the cheapest one I've seen is 12. Now that's new, used, you can get them for a little less, but not tremendously less. Now if you want to go to much older versions, you can get them in the, the anywhere from three to $6,000 mark. But, you know, this is current version. I mean, it is small, light, pretty damn port, you know, portable, and easy to to handhold and use. Where some of those other things, which are you know this long, you can't do that. So, pretty good setup. So we're gonna stick here for a little bit. See if maybe I get lucky and the you know the the bison can come out from wherever they're hiding. And if not, you know, maybe today will be end end up a bust. I have, as I said earlier, taken a few images of deer, you know, and I'll put those in. If I haven't put some of them in, I'll put more in here. But but yeah, it, it, it's a nice warning. It's just cold. You know, we're about. 25 to 28 degrees somewhere in that range you know just another one of those cold mornings even though it's late in march you know so i can keep saying the word so don't know why i'm doing that <laughs> yeah yeah i guess what i should do before i before i stop and wait since i'm sitting here doing anything anyway let's talk about how you know the om1 mark ii auto focuses and how that seems to set up or what i think of that because you know I, I have three of the four functions or you know programmable settings programmed i have one set for birds i have one set for wildlife i have one set all right for wildlife you know and, and i'm using on the on the the wildlife and the birds i'm using the silent shutter i'm not using pro capture at this point haven't done any of that Maybe I will at some point, just not doing it now. But I can tell you, it acquires focus rapidly quick. I would say as good, if not better, than my Canon R5. Um, certainly nothing that would make somebody not want to use it. It's, it's really good when it comes to that. You know, the, the tracking and everything else seems to be really good, pretty much spot on, pretty much every time I use it. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a good thing. You know, the camera itself has performed perfectly. I can't really complain. I think I said this before. Ah, here comes one of my buddies. I see him over here now. All right, and here they come. They're walking out. So I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna go take a few images. So thanks for sticking around, everybody. Let's see if we can capture something. So I've uh, captured a few images here of the bison. Unfortunately, it's through the fence, and they're on through a fence, through another fence. So it's not like these images are going to be world class. This isn't like being out in, you know, Yellowstone or out in Custer State Park, out in South Dakota, or, or the Badlands. It really, this you know, just not the same. All right, but I've got a couple images. So take a, I'll go home, take a look at them post them here. I also captured, like I said, some deer images, you know, and I even tried to capture an image of a cardinal. Um, so we'll put those in, see if we can uh, at least uh, give you a chance to take a look at them, see what you can think or what you think, you know, about this particular setup. So sorry for rambling so much this morning. Yeah, just out and out and about, happy to be out, happy to be outside, happy to be able to breathe some good fresh air, you know, so Thanks for coming along, everybody. You know, again, I'll put stuff in here at the end. You know, um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. 
until we see you again, stay safe. Mm -hmm.